allow me to just talk about courageous people by focusing on the life of Gideon. Amen? And plan is part. Who believe that plan is part of man's daily life? You wake up in the morning, you plan everything, you plan going to the church, and planning things is man's direction. It is your direction. And sometimes, we let life guide us, and other times, we take life by horns. No, by the horns. In short, in life, there will be surprises, and there will be unexpected things in life, in real life. And I believe, hindi naman kayo nagulat sa napangasawa nyo. Amen? It's planned. But, I believe that there is one quote that I admire from Benjamin Franklin. He said, By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. We read it one more time. One, two, three. By to prepare, you are preparing to fail. So in life, we need plans. Plans here, plans there, everything is planned. That's what Benjamin Franklin said. But I made a research that there is some insight that many studies have concluded that the vast majority of strategic planning fails up to 67%. So more than, and a half, more than half of what a person planned ay nagpi-fail pala. And another research made by Gartner, they found out that around 56% of the time spent on strategic planning is wasted. That means losing out on valuable time and wasting critical resources. In short, 100% planning doesn't mean that everything will be done perfectly. Kahit nga po sa live streaming natin, may mga pumapalpak eh, on the spot kasi. But you know what? I came to just point in this biblical principle. In Isaiah 58, and it says there, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So we can see that there's a little bit discrepancy of what Benjamin Franklin said that you need to plan. You need to prepare. But there are things that are surprising. And only the thought of God will prevail even His ways, not our ways. And that's why sometimes we get frustrated in life. You plan this, you decide on this, and then later on nothing happened. I plan everything. Now the question is, with all these things, what can we do? Are we ready to still pursue the plan? Do you still have the courage to go on if things seem to be unclear to you? Today, I let me teach you the life of Gideon in the book of Judges chapter 7. Amen? So let's read all together. And I want everyone to cooperate. You know, Pastora, that wants everyone to read the text. So I'm going to put the first slide here, the second slide here, the following slide here, and the next slide here until we finish. Let me see. We're going to read all our verses with power and, you know, alive in reading this verse. Can we start in this? In Judges chapter 7, it is entitled, Gideon Defeats the Midianites. Okay, one, two, three. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the next row. Therefore, tell the people and go home. So 22,000. Mm -hmm. 
Next verse. In one... In the other group, put all those who kneel down and drink them with their mouths in the stream. Only 300 of the men and all others got down on their knees and drank with their mouths in the stream. Verse 8, so Gideon collected the provisions and rams, horns of the other warriors, kumain na po kayo, sent them, okay, but he kept the 300 men with him. The Midianite camp was in a valley just before, below Gideon. That night, the Lord said, get up, go down into a Midianite camp. For I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura. Let's go back here. Listen to what the Midianites are saying. And you will be greatly encouraged. Then you will be eager to attack. So he took Pura and went down to the edge of the enemy camp. The armies of the Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east had settled in valley like a swarm of locusts their camels were like grains and sand on the seashore too many to count Gideon crept up just as a man was telling his companion about a dream and then the man said I had this dream and in my dream a loaf of barley bread come tumbling down into the Midianite camp it hit the tent turned it over and it flat. His companion answered, Your dream can only one thing. God has given Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite, victory over Midian and it all its allies. When Gideon heard the dream and its instant interpretation, he bowed in worship before the Lord. We're almost done. Then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, Get up, for the Lord has given you victory over Midianite hordes. He divides the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. Then he said to them, Keep your eyes on me. And when I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I and those with me blow the ram's horn, blow your horns too. All around the entire camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. It was just after midnight, after changing of the guard, when Gideon and the hundred men, parang di na sila sumasabay, with him reached the edge of the Midianite camp. Suddenly, they blew the ram horns and broke their clay jars. Then all three groups blew their horns and broke their jars. They held the blazing torches in their left hands and the horns in their right hands. And they all shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Each man stood at his position around the camp and watched as all the Midianites rushed around in a panic, shouting as they ran to escape. Those who were not killed fled to places as far as Bet-Sihat-Sita, near Zera, and to the border of Abel-Mohala, near Taba. Then Gideon sent for the warriors of Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh, who joined in chasing the army of Midian. Gideon also sent messenger throughout the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Those who were not killed fled to places as far away for... So, inulit lang po natin yan. I repeated it. Then, talunan mo muna po tayo dito sa verse, sa last verse po natin. Come down, sabi po sa verse 22, 24, to attack Midianites, cut them off at the shallow crossing of the Jordan River at Be, Beta... Bet, uh, where do you say? Beta... Beta Bara. Yan, Beta Bara. So, all the men of Ephraim did as they were told. They captured Oreb and Siv, the two Medianite commanders, killing Oreb at the rock of Oreb and Siv at the winepress of Siv. And they continued to chase the Midianites. Afterwards, the Israelites brought the heads of Oreb and Siv 
to Gideon who was by the Jordan River. Shall we give a hand to the Word of God? Three words that we need to ponder. Pastora, napakahaba ng binasa namin. Let us try to jot it down little by little. So when we talk about courage, you can see that the master and the source of courage is only belongs to God. Courage. I've grown, I know that all of you already knew that I grow from Tondo. At lagi kong sinasabi, and my always mom tell to me, you have to be strong kid. Either unahan mo sila o unahan kanila. So I was grew up in that context. You have to be strong. You have to prove that you are not afraid or scared of anyone. Otherwise, they're gonna take over you or gonna take advantage of you. So that's the word that is being given to me. But now when I became a Christian, I realized that there are different kinds of courage. And first, if we're going to find the word courage, it is the quality of mindset of spirit enabling us to meet the danger or faces or face opposition or the challenges of life with fearlessness calmness and firmness in short whatever things that happened around you you are still calm and you know that the courage is in you by giving what by the empowerment of the holy spirit and there are two kinds of courage one is good courage and the other one is bad courage. So good courage always relies upon the supernatural power of God to strengthen and motivates believer to be courageous as children of God. What does Romans 5 chapter 3 to 5 says? That, it says there not only that, but we rejoice in suffering, produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not what? When you talk about this one, that hope is what we call the thing. Not to put us to shame, but because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given, us, who has given unto us. So when you talk about good courage, you are not depending on your flesh. You are depending to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But when we talk about bad courage, yung iba nagtatapang-tapangan o matapang, but that deep within they're broken. So bad courage relies on human abilities and motives such as you trust on your lust, on your eyes, and of course, the pride. It says here in James chapter 1, 19 to 27. So we can see here that there is a specific call in the life of Gideon. What such a great courage that will inspire us amidst of all the testing in our life. So let me see who is Gideon. May turang tao si Gideon. Tingnan niyo po yung katabi niyo. Talagang matipuno. No? Pwede niyo pong tingnan yung asawa niyo. You can look at to your husband. He's so handsome. So Gideon, also spelled as Gideon, also called Jerubaal, is considered a judge, a hero, a liberator of Israel. So Gideon was judge appearing in the biblical book of Judges and he was the son of Joas from the clan of Abizer in the tribe of Manasseh and the father of at least 71 sons. Kaunti lang po ang anak. The name Gideon means destroyer, mighty warrior, or possibly feller of trees. Farmer siya. He's a farmer. And wow, what a name. Destroyer. Natatandaan ko po ang pangalang destroyer sa Hinebra yun eh. Si Distrito. Yan. If you're watching PBA basketball, Distrito was known as the destroyer. So, Gideon, let me see some points. How? What are the accomplishments of Gideon's past? What is the credibility of Gideon that I should say that he's a very courageous man? So, Gideon served as the fifth major judge over Israel. He destroyed an altar no, to pagan and ba the pagan god Baal before fighting the Midianites, no? earning the name, kaya tinawag siyang Jerubaal then, meaning contender with Baal. So, Gideon united the Israelites against their common enemies and through God's power, they defeated them. So, pass, why do we need to understand the book of Judges. So the book of Judges, there's what we call cycle. So Gideon was, uh, what he calls, appointed as one of the judges. And 
For us to realize the kind of courage of Gideon, bakit ba may book of Judges? So the book of Judges is that it was placed because the Lord needs to uh, listen to the demand, the request of people that there is no more leader that time. We need a judge to lead us. And the people turn from God to sin. So kahit may nilalagay na, nag, nagkakasala pa rin sila. They keep on sinning. And that the people become enslaved of their sins. And the natural ritual, the natural move of the Israelite people, pag nagkasala, when they committed sin, they go back again, and then when they get what? Suffered, when they suffered, they again cry to God, Lord, please, parang tayo po. Pag maganda ang buhay, when life is okay, we enjoy it. And when we're suffering, that's the time we go back again to God. God rises up, a judges to deliver them. That's why Gideon was sent to deliver these Israelites. And then the people experience peace under the judge. After this, go back again. They commit again the sin. So it becomes the cycle of the Israelites. In short, nakakapagod. But reading the life of Gideon, there are four initial reflections that I want to share with you. God calls those whom He has prepared for the task He has in mind. Do you believe that the Lord will call you, whatever your situation, in a specific task that He wants you to do? Regardless of your weakness, regardless of who you are, God calls someone who is prepared to do a task according to His purpose. If you're going to look at, I want you to open your Bible in the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 11 to 12. And I'm going to read it to you, and you can open it in your Bible. It says there, Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great trees at Oprah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abizer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a winepress to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and saying, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. What a funny statement. I'm going to read again the first initial reflection. God calls those whom he has prepared for the task he has in mind. Not in your mind, but in the mind of God. Do you get what I'm saying? But if you're going to read Judges 6, 11 to 12, what an opposite situation. Do you know where is Gideon the time the angel appeared to him? He is un in the wine press. What is that wine press? Nagtatago po siya. I'm going to speak first in Tagalog so to make it more emphasis and I'm going to translate it in English for our other brethren. Nagtatago po siya. Do you know that threshing the floor, you have to do it outside so that you can blow out the, the one that is not edible all the stocks will be coming out and the one, the wheat that needs to be preserved should remain. But what Gideon is doing, nagtatago siya sa wine press. That is what he's doing because he's scared of the Midianites dahil na sa lahat ng pagkain iniipon nila, all the food that he is pre preserving for his entire clan, when the Midianites saw it, they will get it. In short, ano pong tawag doon? Nangunguha, no? Parang uh, kumukuha ng hindi niya pinaghirapan. In short, Gideon is so scared that he doesn't want to be seen by the Midianites because of the food that they have to keep for the clan. But one thing that touches me when I'm reading Judges 6, 11 to 12, when the angel said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Mighty hero, and then you are hiding. I'm, I'm telling you, most of us before we're hiding in the Lord, right? We're all hiding. And the Lord said, serve ka na. Mighty warrior. Me, Lord, mighty warrior? Nagtatago nga ako eh. All of us here, I believe before God calls us, all of us were hiding. We don't want to be high, uh, called in the church to volunteer, to commit. We're all hiding. And then the second initial thing is that whether, whether Gideon see himself 
that he's scared of the enemy, but in the mind of God, he is a mighty warrior. So that's why you say to your seatmate, you are a mighty warrior. Pag ganun po yung pagkakasabi niyo, mukhang hindi siya mighty. Amen. You are a mighty warrior. Amen. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The second initial reflection is that God knows that sometimes we need courage to keep moving on. Do you agree with me? Even though we know that we have this ability, ability to do things, there will be times in our life that we want to back off. Parang ayoko nang ituloy. I think I need to stop. Because I see things that is not favorable on my part. I think I'm gonna lose this game. I'd rather go back. And that's the time that the Lord will prove to us that He knows that God knows sometimes we need courage to keep moving on. That is why in Judges 6, 13 to 14, basahin po natin, sabi to, Sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has this happened to us? And where all the miracles our, uh, our ancestor told us about. Did they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now... The Lord abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. And the Lord came and said, Go with the strength you have. Can you see it? Go with the strength you have. This is a very impact, a very uh, meaningful statement. Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. In Tagalog, Lord, di ka ba nagkakamali? Sigurado ka ba? Are you sure, Lord, that I am the one you're sending me? I am a bit discouraged. But the Lord said, Go with the strength that you have. Kung anong meron ka, Church, today, whatever is in your hand right now, little strength, little abilities, it doesn't matter. The Lord said, Go with the strength that you have. Give a hand to the Lord. Hallelujah! And another initial reflection is that God, can you use anything? Now, God can use anything to accomplish everything. Kahit bato, gagamitin ng Diyos para magpakita siya ng Himala. Even smallest things which you cannot imagine, God will use it to fulfill His purpose to you and me. Hindi mo ba ninyo mapapansin? Who told you that one day makakatabi mo yung katabi mo? Who brought you here? We're not connected to each other. But the Lord bring us all together in one for a perfect purpose. Amen? Let us read Judges chapter 6, verse 15, hallelujah to 16. It says there, but the, Lord, uh, but the Lord said, Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh. And I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to, to him, I will be with you. And you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Listen church, when I'm reading the life of Gideon, the third initial reflection that the Lord put into my heart, God will use anything to accomplish everything. Maybe right now in your life, you have a long-standing prayer that seems to be uncleared and no more possible way to come out. But you know what? Even into the wink of an eye, the Lord will use anything to accomplish everything in your life. Do you agree with me? Let's give a hand to the Lord again. Hallelujah! The next initial reflection is that God will affirm His promise to clear our doubts. What a funny story when I'm reading and reflecting this book of Genesis, uh, Judges chapter 6, uh, 17 to 23. I look at it and I said, Lord, truly, you are the one who remove our doubts. I just want to paraphrase these verses. And Gideon replied, if you are truly going to help me, Show me sign to prove that it's really the Lord speaking to me. 
He's talking to the angel, Lord, kung talagang sasamahan mo ako, patunayan mo. Don't go away. I'll come back to bring my offering to you. So he answered. The angel said, okay, okay, I'll stay. Who among you have this prayer sometimes? Lord, show me a sign. Are you praying that thing? Lord, show me a sign if, if this is for you, if it comes from you. Lord, maraming mga hugot niyan eh sa TikTok. Uh, Lord, kung siya, uh, ito ang suot niya. Lord, if he's really the man that I love, if he's the man that will going to give me, when I see him, his shirt will be color purple or blue. And dami naka-blue ngayon. So, Gideon is like, you know what, a Christian begging for a clear answer. And you know what, in the midst of our doubts, the Lord will send something, somebody to prove that said, this is what I said to you. And what happened? If you're going to go further, in the book of Judges 6, 6, uh, chapter 6, 17 to 23, nakipag negotiate pa siya sa angel. And Gideon hurried home. He cooked a young goat. Ang tagal kayo magluto ng goat. Ilang oras ba magluto ng goat? For those who are cooking the a goat. And I think, and with a basket full of flour, he baked some uh, bread without the yeast. How many hours to make a bread without a yeast? Three hours. Imagine, pinagintay mo yung anghel. Kaanis dyan, ha? Angel, please wait. If you really came, this message came from the Lord, wait, I'll just cook. Luluto lang ako ng kambing at saka ng tinapay. Wow! What a patience from God. Do you know sometimes when we're praying to the Lord and the Lord's telling us, my son, my daughter, this is my plan to you. Unfortunately, some of us don't believe. We keep on haggling. Lord, prove to me. Nagluluto tayo ng sarili nating goat. We, nagluluto tayo sa really nating plano sa buhay. And the plan of God is already there. Sometimes we're doing it on our own way. Wherein God is already sending the angel to prove, this is your way. But Gideon said, just wait. I'll cook goat, okay? I'll be back. I'll, I'll bake something. Promise. Please, wait. And, and you know what? It is not only these things that matter that when Gideon realized, take note, Gideon did what he was told. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and bread with the lip of the staff in his hand and fire flamed up and consumed all the sacrifices. Wow! Alas! Dun yang nanasabi, pinadala ka nga ng Diyos? Yeah! Wow! Now I believe that you're being sent by God. Sometimes, in our Christian life, ang tagal mo nang nagsiserve sa Lord, nagtatanong ka pa, tinawag mo ba ako, Lord? May emote pa yun. Did you know that all of us, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, all of us are being called to be His children? Don't stop of being called. Push forward to be chosen. Amen? Now, look at this. The next thing that the Lord imparted into my heart is that God knows that something we need courage. And I do believe that in the cases that the Lord also knew that there are doubts in our life, He will try to clear all our doubts by sending someone. This is the three things what happened to Gideon. There are three phases of battle in Gideon's life. One, the time of being cold, the time of being challenged, and the time of being a, pa, a champion. Wow! Pastor, in all these three stages of life, we need courage? Yes! Did you know that Gideon was called for a purpose? And he was called in the time of one, in the season of oppression. When God called Gideon, binubuli sila. Imagine how hard it is to be bullied. The Midianite find it hard to prepare food. They're doing it in the wine press. Nagtatago sila. Para wag nakawi ng Midianites yung pinaghirapan nila. They're really scared with the Midianites. 
But the Lord called Gideon in the season of oppression. Maybe some of you are being oppressed right now. Maybe some of you are trying to bully you because you don't know this and you don't know that. People don't believe in you. But Gideon was called by God. In Judges chapter 6, verse 1 to 3, he was called in the season wherein he is in the state of oppression. This is a courageous call. He lived in Israel during that time, and that time he had to keep his self. Kailangan niyang magtago. But you know what? I do believe, kapag tinago, tinawag ka ng Lord, kahit saan ka magtago, wala kang magagawa. Amen? If God calls you, wherever you hide, magtago ka man, tatawagin at tatawagin ka ng Diyos. Amen? And then the second thing that Gideon was called in the season of devastation. Wow! What a degree of, of pain in life. Sino po dito nakakilala sa Lord sa panaw na devastated ang buhay mo? Can I see the hand? You felt that there's no one sound like I see someone in here. You've been rejected by this world. Your life is so devastated. And you cannot find yourself who will be. Who will be your hero in that moment of your life? The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Seven years, the Lord allowed them to be under the hands of Midianites. And they were being devastated. In short, pinaghihirapan, hindi nila napapakinabangan. Life was so full of misery, full of frustration. And another thing, God called Gideon in the time of depression. Church, maybe some of you are now depressed. You find yourself as if there's no sense of direction. You just find yourself here in Canada, sleep at night, wake up in the morning to work, go to work, go home, eat and sleep. Life has been so routinary. It seems that there's no clear direction. But take note, that the Lord called Gideon in Judges 6, chapter 6 to 10, in the season of depression. Even in the season of confusion. He says, if you're going to look at Judges chapter 6, verse 11 to 13, it is taken note that the angel of the Lord came down under the oak of Oprah, belonged to Joash the Abezerite, where he's the son of Gideon, the son is Gideon itself, and he was threshing in the wine press. What a point of confusion. Lord, are you calling me? Am I a mighty warrior? How can I say I am a mighty warrior? Mighty warrior wherein I am hiding with these Midianites. But the Lord called him in the season of confusion. And then the last, Gideon was called in the season of humiliation. Judges 6, 14 to 15, Gideon said, then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength that you have, and you will save the Israel. I am sending you. Pardon me, my Lord. Ah, uh, paulit nga po. Uh, hello, Lord. Pa Pakiulit po. Sigurado po kayo ako. Baka itong katabi ko. That's why when we're being assigned in the church, don't say, but ako? Wala na pong paniki dito, no? Pardon me, Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in the family. So this is a kind of courageous call. When Gideon was called by God, he is oppressed, devastated, depressed, confused, and being humiliated. But this is the thing that I want to show you. Try to look at this picture. Gideon was hiding in the wine press. And here comes, I want to look at that picture, how wine press looked like. Para siyang cave. Underneath, there's a cave. Doon nagtatago. And then the Lord will tell, the angel of the Lord will say, Mighty warrior! See? So what's the point here? Let's proceed to the four challenges. The first challenge. In Judges chapter 7, 1 to 7, early in the morning, Jerubaal, that is Gideon, <clears throat> and all his men camped at the spring of Harod. 
The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of More. Alam niyo po yung picture nitong spring of uh, Herod. Dito po sila uminom ng tubig, yung 300. What is the element of the first challenge when Gideon was called by God? Sometimes, when the Lord called us, Nagtatanong ka, Lord, tama ba tong place ko? Is this the right place? The spring is located in the Harod Valley, which is the eastern part of the Jezreel Valley. So, ano po yung pinaka-importance nito? Tingnan niyo po tong picture na to. I try to capture some pictures, the new one, where it is not about the place. Gideon, his courage was tested in of the place. Can you say it with me? Place. Dumadating sa buhay ninyo, minsan ayaw nyo yung lugar na pinuntahan nyo. Who among you here in Canada, you are having a good position in the Philippines, working good in the Philippines, and then you go here and you start it from scratch. And then you ask yourself, tama ba tong desisyon ko? Did I, is this the right place for me, Canada? I'm the boss, right? Now you're making pizza. Your professor and your changing diaper of the kids. Is this the right place, Lord? Hey, what's going on, Lord? But you told me go with the strength that you have. But Lord, this is the right place. You know, the place of this of this spring is so significant because it is this location is the source of water. Doon po sila umiinom. And people are gathering it. And based on the history, when you are going to camp with the water, doon kayo magkakamp, parang camping side, you have the control of the war. And this is what the Lord brings Gideon. What the Lord says, early in the morning, Jerubaal or Gideon and all his men camp at the spring of Herod. Meaning, they put God put them into a strategic place. Church, when you came here in Canada, probably you want to go back to the Philippines because things are not clear for you. Maybe in your job today, Lord, but parang di ko gusto tong trabaho to, pero pinagpray ko to eh. But why it seems it I'm not what I wanted to see. Is the right place? When God put you in this specific place, He is in control of everything. Amen? Amen. Give a hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. So what's the lesson in here? What's the lesson in here, church, young people? It is not about the place. It's about how God will display His glory in that place. Kahit saan kayo ilagay ng Lord, wherever place you are, if God designed you to shine in that place, despite of opposition, you will continue to shine. Amen. Give a hand to the Lord Almighty. This is the courage. That's why Gideon said, Are you really sure, Lord? Okay, I'm going to go here, Lord, with the strength that I have. What is the point of reference here with regards to challenge? Number one, don't underestimate what God can do even to the smallest details of your life. Probably, if Gideon has a choice, he doesn't want to camp on that area in the, in the Harrod Spring. He probably go into other campsite. Mas maganda sa McDonald kaysa sa Vermilion. What the Lord said, come there. That's the good spot. You are in control. Sometimes, we put the control in our hands because we thought this is the best battle fight that we can do. But it's not. The Lord knows where's the perfect place for us. Don't underestimate God of what He can do even to the smallest details of your life. Psalms 50, uh, 50 51, NASB, NASB. Call on me on the day of trouble. Hindi nga sinabi do, call on me tomorrow. But the Lord says, can you read it? Call upon on the day of trouble. And I will rescue you, and you will honor me. Even to the smallest details of your life, 
God is giving courage to fight a good fight of faith. If you need and you are in trouble today, Psalms 50 verse 50 said, Call on me in the day of trouble and I will rescue you. Because the Lord, you cannot underestimate the power of God. Praise God. Let's give a hand to the Lord. Praise Jesus. Second, the second challenge. You see, the first is that Gideon was called in that season of depression, prostration. And here comes the challenge. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel will boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, Anyone who trembles with fear may turn their back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remain. Kung kayo kaya utusan ni Lord, pumunta ka sa gera. Mawasa mo yung tao mo. So how many persons they're fighting for here? So 22,000 men left the battlefield. And oh, how many remains to Gideon? Ten. All in all, ilan ang tao niya ng una? Thirty? Thirty-two. But the Lord said to Gideon, Asyado kayong madami. Eh, gano'n ba talaga kadami yung kalaban? Konti lang naman po. Ang kalaban nila is 135,000. Hey! Pass! Are you kidding? Are you telling me? The second challenge in Gideon's life, can I trust God's word? Kaya niyo bang pagtiwalaan ang salita ng Diyos? Can you trust the message, the word of God that God has given to you each day of your life? Can you trust and hold in His promises? Imagine, sabi ng Lord, ang dami niyo, sobrang dami yan. When I deliver you with that total number of people, 32,000, for sure, may magyayabang dyan. Oh, kaya mo naman kami nanalo because of our strength. Kaya, I want you, Gideon, to announce this. Special announcement, ding, ding. Anyone who trembles with fear, uwi na lang. Alalin niyo po ng bata tayo sa Pilipinas pag naglalaro, pag talo na, uuwi na yan. Uuwi na yan. Talunan. Di ba? When we are playing in the Philippines, when we're kids, when you are, somebody will bully you. We can, you're a loser, loser, loser. Di ba sabi niyo sa katabi mo, di ba? Loser. So what happened? The, the kids will cry, oh, I'm a loser. Here, the Lord said, let them are afraid. Gideon, I don't need them. When you experience this situation, can you still trust the promise of God where in fact in your mind you are fighting 135,000 versus 32 ito po yung picture it is not the weakness that is considered but is it is our dependency to his word that matters most amen let's give a hand to the Lord God's power is found where I'm most dependent on Him. So, I realize, if dependence is the object, then weakness is always an advantage. You take my point? Kung ang basis po ng pagkapanalo ay imagnify ang kahinaan, eh di aaminin kong mahina ako para ang Diyos ang magpuno sa akin. Amen! As a result of fear and intimidation, from 32 naging 22,000 sila fighting this man. What a unique result of God's demand to Gideon. Have you noticed in your life, sometimes the Lord is asking you to lay down everything you have. Hello? Are you ready to lay down everything you have for the Lord? And I came to realize, the more we admit that we are weak, the more the Lord has had a chance to fill us up. 
Sa mga panahon na tayo umaamin sa Diyos na tayo ay mahina, the more merong pagkakataon ang Diyos na punuin niya tayo sa lahat ng kulang natin. Sometimes, God no, will prove to us, ipipihit niya tayo, God will maneuver our life to see the point of our weakness so we can see His greatness. It is not the weakness that is considered, but it is our dependency to His Word that matters most. Church, what are the promises of God that you are holding? Maybe some of you are still fighting for your paper here in Canada. Maybe some of you wants to restore your family relationship. Maybe some of you wants revival in your business, relationship to your children, to your husband and to your wife. What is the promises of God that you are holding? Pass, I'm so weak. And let the word of God strengthen you. Amen? So point number two, Gideon's challenge. God will always be with you in whatever task He called you to do. When He asked Gideon, go with the strength that you have. Hindi po sinabi ng Lord, with the strength that you have and try to bring this troop and this troop. But the Lord says to Gideon, whatever you have. That's why we have the song, what, what Pastor Joey uh, composed. With those, with, with the, what's that wrong, Brother Ron? With this so little Lord that I have, with this so little Lord that I've got, I promise to love you. I promise to serve you more. Church, the Lord is not looking for the big things you have. Kasi pag marami tayo, mayabang tayo eh. Pero pag kakaunti tayo at wasak tayo, doon natin nakikita ang kalakihan ng Diyos sa buhay natin. Amen? God will always be with you whatever the task that you do. Saan po nakakag nakakagalaw ang Lord? When is the season that the Lord can move in our lives? Not in the season that we are full. The Lord is moving into us in the season that we are empty. Sino po yung laging napupuspos sa church? Yung pumupunta lagi pag Sunday service ng may expectation. Who are being filled with the Holy Spirit every time those who go in the church? Those heart, those soul that is hungry in the presence of God. Pero pag pumunta ka lang sa church kasi gusto mo lang, wala lang, gusto mo lang. Bago yung binili mong suot, makita man lang. You will go out, nothing. Amen? That's why 2 Corinthians 12, 8, it says there to 9 in NLT, three different times I begged to the Lord, sabi po ni Paul, to take away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. When I'm trying to go in the commentary, what is this uh, Paul begging to the Lord? It's talk about many of Paul's prayer are remained unanswered. Taas ang kamay ng mga, mga meron pang unanswered prayers dito. Pakiwagayway po. Hallelujah! Let that unanswered prayer be a mega, a figure of your weakness and one day the Lord will deliver you in that prayer. Amen? Hallelujah! Let that weakness. That's why sabi ni Paul, Lord, I beg to this three times na ako nagpipray. Three times na akong refuse sa CIC, Lord. Three times na akong refuse sa job, sa promotion. I'm begging you this. But the Lord says, this time, my power works best in you. That in the season that we are broken and nothing, God taking over in our lives. Second to the last, third challenge, but the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many. Lord naman, 30 son, pinauwi mo yung 22, 10,000 na nga lang. Madami pa rin. Kalaban ko, 135,000. And then here am I, you're telling me there's still more many men here with me. 
And the Lord said, take them down to the water and I will thin them out for you. Ititrim down pa ng Lord. If I say, this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. Siguro po ito ang naging tanong ni Gideon na naisip ko. Will my brothers have my back? Do I have enough resources I need? In our life, sometimes, nadi-discourage tayo pag wala na tayong resources. Siguro iniisip ni Gideon, Naku, sasama pa ba itong sampung libong to pag sinabi kong babawasan pa kami? Was there any point in your life na puro deduction ang ginagawa ng Lord, walang addition? Were you experience in your life that the Lord do a lot of subtraction rather than addition and multiplication? Hello, church! When God do a lot of subtraction in us, don't worry. Because if there is subtraction, God will have a different equation for you. Amen! Give a hand to the Lord! Lord, bakit naman subtraction? Wala bang dagdag? Tayo pa naman pong Pilipino. Filipinos love dagdag. Sa, sa Batangas po, tawag namin ay, uh, ano nga ba yun, mahal, ang tawag natin pag dadagdag? Uh, may bibiling ka din, may dadagdag. Pahiling. Pahiling naman nito. Binili mo ganun, tas ang hihilingin, ganun. Hello? Can you add more? Can I have a discount? Or probably, yeah, that's the price, but can you add more on it? We love it. That's why we love Divisoria. We can bargain. The third battle, or the challenge of Gideon. Gideon, I think your 10,000 is still many. Yung lakas mo, anak. Lakas mo pa yan, di pa yan galing sa akin. Bawasan mo pa yung pride mo. Bawasan mo pa yung yabang mo. May nakikita pa ako. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, hindi ikaw yun, di ba? Hindi tayo yun. Hello? Will my brother have my back? This is the question of Gideon. Will my brothers have my back with this demand, with this construction of the Lord that this thousand will be thinned more? Do I have enough resources? So Gideon, on the next slide, he brought this 10,000. Hali kayo. Siguro habang naglalakad si Gideon, baka magbago pa, isip mo, Lord, 10,000 versus 135,000, babawasan mo pa. It is not about your criteria. For God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Amen? Pas, pastor, hawakan ko ba yung ministry niyan? Takot ako eh. Alam po, may mga matet dito sa church. Takot. Takot ako, Lord, handle yan. Pastora, iba na lang. Takot ako eh. Pero nakikita mong may potensyal. At alam ko po, maraming ministry head dito, mga matet. Pagbabay, paglalaki. <laughs> it is about, it is not about your criteria. Sometimes we're not courage. Do you don't have courage enough to move? Kasi ang nagset ng criteria ikaw. But the criteria of God, Gideon, take it out. Bawas pa, bawas. So Gideon looked the man down to the water. At yung iinom na parang dog, pawiin na. At yung iinom like a very what do you call this? A very observant soldier. Iwan mo. You know what? Proverbs 21, 2. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. There are a lot of teachings that I've heard that those people have been sent out by Gideon to go home. Ilan po ang binawas? From 10,000, it became 
300. So, how many? 9,700. All of them drank from the water using their what? Like a dog. So we thought, oh, go home now. Because this one, 300, who's drinking, very observant, they are ready because they're sensitive. Sometimes, yun, yun, yun madras natin naririnig na interpretation. But this, when I'm preparing this, the Lord gave me the message. You know what? I have also purpose for those people who drunk like a dog. One, they have a purpose. Because if they're not sensitive in the war, hindi sila mamamatay, di ba? Kailangan ko silang iwi. I need to preserve the clan of Gideon. So those who are not yet prepared, go and be trained. Amen? But there is one thing. Why Proverbs 21 verse 2 strikes into my heart? Person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. There is a possibility na yung 900, ay 9,700 na yon. Mukhang yun ang pipiliin ni Gideon pag siya ang gumawa. Pwedeng magkamali siya ng pipiliin. That is why, church, this is a big challenge for Gideon. This last second to the last challenge, it is not your criteria, it is not my criteria. It is the criteria of God. That's why when the Lord gave us a chance to serve in the ministry, go! No matter whatever your, you know what, pas, marami pa akong aayusin. Oh, hindi naman ako mag-aayos sa'yo si Lord. I remember one of our teacher in vacation, in, in, in children ministry during the camping, Sister Jasmine said, Pas, I realize in my life that when you serve the Lord, just obey and provision will follow. Just obey whatever the Lord wants you to do. What is lacking in you, being a leader, if you just obey, the Lord will supply everything. Meron na ho bang ginamit dito, manager agad sa church? Wala po. Lahat po tayo, dinampot lang ng Lord na walang wala. And let God define your life and set the best criteria for you. Not in your own strength, but in the strength of God. Amen? Let's give a hand to the Lord. Therefore, God is ready to give you assurance. Number three, even when you don't understand. That's challenge number three experienced by Gideon. Nag, yung criteria natin is not in the criteria of God. Because God is ready to give you assurance even when you don't understand Him. Madalas may pinagagawa ang Lord sa atin, di natin maintindihan. Remember what Pastor Alex said during the anniversary. If you cannot trust His hand, trust His heart. Like in Exodus 40, 10, 11, in paraphrasing, you can see this verse that Moses is really huggling to the Lord. Lord, bulul ako, nag ako. Who's told you stuttering? But now look at Brother Dan. He's now talking. See? Ngayon, pag di mo na siya kinakausap, ikaw ang kakalabitin. Remember Brother Dan, for God's glory. He doesn't want to talk. He's stuttering like Moses. But I, I, I don't want to talk. Because he felt that we are not patient to listen to him. Pero tayo ngayon, hindi na excited pa tayo magtuloy-tuloy siya magsalita. And God will prove everything. He will give you assurance to just go forward. Have the courage even though you don't understand. And last but not the least, the fourth challenge. In Judges chapter 7, verse 7, the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that I locked, I will save you and I'll give Midianites in your hand. Let all the others go home. Siguro ang tanong, Lord, am I capable? Am I capable? Finally, when I am reading this, I came to realize in my life, sometimes confident tayo pag may sapat tayong savings, kotse, bahay, everything, good business. Solid bank account, you got, you're, making, you're making money, you're confident of everything. But when the Lord starts to take it away, saka ka na nagtatanong, Lord, am I capable? Bigla nang naging center of attraction ni Gideon yung sarili niya. 
Siguro kasi nung 10,000 pa, ay pwede pa to, kasi si ganito, magaling yan, ito si ganito. Magaling. But there will be time, even in the ministry, listen ministry head, sometimes the Lord will try not to be, you know, around with people whom you trusted. Sometimes hindi sila dadating. Sometimes hindi mo sila makikita. But I'm telling you, what is important, you are still standing. And the Lord will supply everything. Amen! Am I capable? Yun po ang tanong po ni Gideon. So next, this is now the picture so that I can go to my application. Look at this picture. This is 135,000 versus 300. Parang langgam. Look at the next picture. 135,000 versus 300. Wow. God, look at me. 135,000 Midianites versus 300 Israelites. It is not about who remained. It is about who sustained in the battle with the right condition of the heart. Amen? It is not who remained. It is about who sustained in the battle with the right condition of the heart. That is why kahit tatatlo o aapat, basta busog ang puso at connected sa Diyos, panalong panalo ka. You can be still a winner. Amen? It is not about to remain. Nag-remain nga, pabigat naman. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, kabalikat ka sa church. Hindi ka kabigat. Hindi, kabigatan po. Hindi po wait ang usapan. Kabigatan. And as I conclude the fourth challenge of Gideon, God always works in a way that exalts Him and bring Him glory. Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways are my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I just want to emphasize this last challenge. There are times in our life we trust on our own strength. That's why I'm always reminding everyone, be careful of all the blessings you have. God always works. Blessing is also a test. Will it be still for God's glory? Pas, I have the strength. What if God take your life today? Ang dami mo ng plano. But the Lord says, For my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And finally, He was called. He experienced the challenges. And He became a champion. Who wants to be a champion here? Can you give a hand to the Lord? But being a champion like Gideon, it's not easy. He needs to prepare. That's why in Judges 7, 9 to 14, please note that even in chapter 6 of Judges, si Gideon po binasag niya yung pagan Baal. Even Gideon consecrated himself. I saw one of the posts during the CYN with Pastor Joey. Consecration brings power. Amen? That when you do consecration, it brings power in the presence of God. Before Gideon fight the battle with the Midianites, Judges chapter 6, atras tayo, kinonsecrate niya yung sarili niya. Ang tao pong may tapang, handa munang magpabasag sa Diyos bago pumasok ng laban. Before the anniversary, we have to consecrate. Amen? Ang taong matapang, kailangan munang magpabatag sa Diyos bago magsimula ang laban. It means you are not depending on your strength. You are depending to God. Second commission, before Gideon become a champion, the Lord commissioned him. He consecrated himself, he, uh, himself as a preparation. And then the Lord commissioned him, Go, Gideon! I'm gonna make it paraphrasing now. This is it, the moment. He prepared himself. He wake up early in the morning. He prepared himself in the battle. 
What are the battles in your life? Are you preparing for it? Do you prepare yourself in the battle? And what I love most in Gideon to become a champion in the season of execution. They make a loud noise. Look at the picture. The champion reels victory is equivalent to God's way. Ngayon lang po ako nakakita ng laban na ang dala. Ano po? Sulo? Trompeta? Ano pa? Pichil? Yun ang dala nila. Anong dala nyo ngayon sa laban nyo? What are the things that you have in your battle pass? My tears of crying. Then use your tears of crying and kneel down to the Lord. The champion's real victory is equivalent to God's way. The Lord withheld down Gideon's army from 32,000 to 300 men against 135 Midianites. So there will be no mistake. I am telling you 100% God didn't make a mistake because the victory was possible only because it was God's doing. That whatever battle it is, God is in control. That whatever weapons of the enemy against us, it will not overwin us because the weapon of God is powerful than the weapons of the enemy. As I conclude, it doesn't matter what you, what you don't have. You are always, you know, you're always the majority as you walk in the will and the purpose of God. Because His power and His presence is more than enough for us to have courage and conquer all our battles. Sometimes, you are the minority. Sometimes, people will go together against you. But I'm telling you, even in the sight of men, you are the minority. But in the sight of God, you are the majority. Amen! That is when we trust in God. Shall we all arise? What a powerful reminder of God to us in the life of Gideon. The courage or the courage of Gideon was tested in the time that he was called. He was called in the season of desperation. The courage of Gideon was tested in the time of challenge. Pabawas ng pabawas. Because God wants to reveal something. And the courage of Gideon was tested in the season of being a champion. Hindi po magmadaling maging champion. Marami kang pagdadaanan. People will reject you, humiliate you. But it doesn't matter. What matters most, you are majority in the sight of God. Amen. Give a hand to the Lord. Give a hand to Jesus. He is so powerful. Kahit na sabihin, wala tayong pera. If God is with us, merong gagawin ng Diyos. Lord, we don't have 135,000. We don't have 1.9. But we have a big, big God. Hallelujah. Shall we lift our hands to the Lord? And we will be glad. We will be glad to declare that even in the midst of battle, we have this courage from God. We have the courage to fight the good fight of God, fight of faith. We will continue to be glad in the presence of God. I will not be dismayed. Because God is with me. Oh, we give you praise. Can, come on, let's give a 30 seconds of clap of praise to the Lord. Honoring Him. Praising Him. Hallelujah. Come on. Lift up your hands. Ask God. Ask God, Lord. Like Gideon. I am ready. I am ready.
to fight this battle. You are my shield. You are my strength. You are my portion. You are. You are my deliverer. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Sing it slow. And I made me glad. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord forever. And I will trust Him at all times. And I will lift up your hands. Trust Him at all. Whatever your battle is, trust in Him. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. He has believed. Me from all he has set me and he has set my feet upon the road and I will not be moved Lord and I will say
sang it softly. Thou my shield. Lord, you are our shield. My portion. Sing it to the Lord. You are. be with us we will never give up Lord even in the season that we are considered minority but in your presence if you are with us who can be against us we will be the majority Father bless we bless we bless your name we bless your name Lord come on give a hand 